Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will continue with playing with hexagons inside Microsoft Word using Visual Basic for applications, that is using macros. So this is what we have from the last time and here is a simple code to create this kind of effect. We have three different sections for drawing three different hexagons for each position. So I will delete those two and I will maybe change the fill to be no fill for this effect which we are looking for fill visibility equals zero not true but actually false zero and i will maybe change the line foreground color object theme color to what was previously used for the fill i don't need to set the fill and i will set the line width to maybe two so i should get just one different one hexagon for each position fill would be not visible and the foreground color will be kind of random so i'll delete everything and try to run this macro and i'm getting different shapes i will probably change the object theme color to go from four to nine so i will not use the black and white colors so everything will be almost around, centered around the same color now what i would like to do is i would like to make those hexagons just a little bit smaller just though they don't touch each other they are a little bit overlapped and I can do it here by resizing after I draw the hexagon like I did in this last tutorial or I can just change the drawing procedure which I will probably do this time. First thing I need to do is I need to have a separate value for Y spacing and the height because currently I'm using the height value to set the height of the row so I, did, I need a new variable which will be X Y spacing and for this one I will use a very similar formula as was used for the height. So I will also say the y spacing is hex width times this one, and I need to move it down here. So I need to update the code to use this y spacing. So I will look for the y position. It's in here, the counter rows dot uh, hex height, and I will do, uh, do the hex, uh, counter rows dot hex y spacing. I will delete the divide by two. And I will probably set the y spacing to be already divided by two. So divided by two. If I run this, I should get the very same result. But what I can do now is I can say that the hex width equals to hex width times sorry width times 0 0.9 for example. And I can do the same for hex height. It will not work right away, but those shapes should be a little bit smaller like they are now. I may also increase the number of rows to three to see what's happening here. So it seems like that most of the stuff is right. The only thing which is not right is every other row should be a little bit offset more to the right. And I believe that's because of the of this part of the code where we offset everything based on the hex width, whereas we should offset everything based on the x spacing instead. If I run this again. I'll probably draw it to be clear to make to make sure that everything is clear. So if I select the draw functions, so this is the x spacing. This is the distance between the first or the left side of the hexagon and the next left side of the hexagon. I want every other row to be offset or drawn on like this position. And immediately you can see that it's like a half of this width. So let's try if that works. If I delete everything and say that the x offset is based on the x, x spacing divided by 2 for every other row, I should get what I'm looking for. Okay, so I do have a little bit smaller hexagons which are not touching each other. What I would like to do next is I would like to make this kind of fake 3D cube effect. And I will do it in a way that I will draw three different lines. One will be drawn from the left top vertex of the hexagon, like this. Second line will be drawn from bottom left vertex to the center, like this. The drawing is not working as expected. And the last, the third line will be drawn from this right vertex also to the center. I don't know why the drawing is acting so weird. Anyway, so we'll draw three lines, all will be going to the center of the polygon, but each one will be from a different vertex. Well, so let's see if we can somehow 
draw it using the visual basic for application so i will probably draw it before the actual hexagon is being drawn and i will say the active document dot shapes dot add line and the beginning of the line will be same as the beginning of the hexagon that is this one but offset by a certain value and the certain value will most likely be based on the hex width divided by four i believe let's see if this works the next one is the y position the y position will be this time very same as the y position of the hexagon so i will just copy paste it i will put it into multiple lines so it's more obvious what we are doing the end x position will be in the center of the hexagon so i will again use the same pos x position as we were starting with but this time i will div divide the hex width divided by two and the last one is ending y position which will be same as the beginning but we have to add the half of the hexagon height so i will say hex height plus hex height divided by two hopefully i can close this bracket and say and if i'm obviously missing something in here okay so maybe just a bracket so this is times here is the bracket it shouldn't be there okay i may also change the foreground color to be some random one so let's see if that works and it seems like that it's working we are drawing a line from the top left vertex to the center of the hexagon and actually the all the other lines will be much easier than this because we will just uh, slightly modify this code so the second line should be drawn from the bottom left corner which is this one so the x position will be the same the y position will be just increased by the height of the hexagon so i'll just add plus hex height that should be basically it again if i delete everything and run this macro again you can see that i did get this second line so i only need to add third line which will be drawn from this vertex on the right side going to the center so this vertex on the right right side the exposition is the beginning plus the width of the hexagon so the beginning plus the hexagon width i will not divide it by anything the y position should be the hexagon beginning plus the half of the height of the hexagon so hex height divided by two the ending exposition is the beginning of the hexagon plus the half of the width of the hexagon so that's already in there and the last y position should be well it should be it should be same hopefully let's see if it works if not we'll change the code okay so thankfully it's working and we are getting this kind of fake 3d cubes effect i kind of like this one maybe what i would like to do is i would like to set the lines colors to be same as the outline color but maybe a little bit lighter so what i will do i will define a new variable which i will call maybe a random color and i will say that this is the random times five plus four and i will say i uh, use this color for all the shapes or for all the three lines and also for the hexagon itself now for the lines i may change the brightness of the color so i'll say line dot four color dot tint and shade and i will maybe change it to 0 0.5 for this one i may change it to different value maybe 0 0.7 maybe here i will use 0 0.6 whatever i may change those values later and i may also change the line width i believe the default one is not one but maybe 0 0.75 so i will save set this to one for every line and i will keep it to two for the outline so it's a little bit bolder so if i run this again i will get a random fake 3d cubes where, where the lines inside the cube are kind of matching the outline and you can see that there, there is a little bit of randomness of the tint actually i may change the this first color to be lighter than the bottom one so what i can do is this first one could be maybe 
this is the first one. This one could be maybe 0 0.8 instead of 0 0.5, and this could be maybe the bottom one could be darker, and the middle one should be something in between. So again, I will run this macro for the last time, and you can see that the top line is much lighter than the other two. I will group everything, and of course I can still, since I'm using team colors, I can change the team. And for this time I may go with this red violet one, kind of like this one. And that's it for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching.